Welcome back to another book review. My name is Jason, and I'm going to be talking about Sweet Silver Blues by Glenn Cook. Uh, Sweet Silver Blues is the first novel in the Garrett P.I. series. Um, <clears throat> if you just look here at the cover of the book, you're going to kind of get a, a wrong impression, uh, a little bit of a wrong impression about the novel. What you see here is a group of gnomes, fairy creatures of some sort, talking to a guy standing there wearing a trench coat. He's got a cigarette in his hand. Uh, on the desk behind him, <clears throat> there's a, an old-fashioned telephone, and the gnome is holding an automatic weapon. Um, the thing is, is that this is a, a detective novel. Garrett is a private investigator, <clears throat> and there is magic involved. I mean, it says that on the, the tagline there, uh, on the front cover. Um, the thing is, is that there are no automatic weapons. There are no telephones. It's not like a, a more modern adaptation of like fantasy. Uh, it is actually he lives in a fantasy world where there doesn't there isn't a lot of technology, um, and so the gun there is. I I don't know why they put the gun or the telephone there on the on the cover. Anyway, <clears throat> what happens in, in uh, Sweet Silver Blues is that uh, Garrett uh, is home from the war. Uh, he was a Marine, and uh, this war has been going on in a part of the country called the K Kentard. It's uh, uh, been disputed uh, among various nations, and Garrett was at one time a Marine, and he survived and came back home. Uh, and when he came back home, he, he became a confidential agent and uh, basically uh, did what he could um, to investigate various things that people brought to him. Uh, his, he had a pal named Denny that he met while he was in the, uh, in the Army, and, or excuse me, in the Marines. And um, this friend of his actually managed to amass quite a fortune in silver uh, after the after the war and uh, then he was killed and in his will he left that silver or at least a sizable chunk of that silver to a, a, a woman and um, Denny's family came to Garrett and wanted him to find her and give her her portion of the, of, uh, the inheritance um, and uh, turns out that not only did uh, Denny have a past with this woman, but Garrett did as well. Before going off to war, he had, they'd been childhood, well, not childhood, teenage sweethearts. And so he wanted, he at first wanted nothing to do with this because he, he might have to go back into the war zone that he just escaped from. Uh, but in conjunction with his uh, pal, Morley, dotes and yes morley dotes and the rose triplets uh he ends up going back into the war zone to find this this woman um, garrett full human morley dotes half elf and uh, uh the thing is is that this does change some of the the tropes and ideas that you have about fantasy morley is not um, he is a handsome man uh, don't get me wrong, at least by the description in the book, he's a handsome man. Uh, but he is a bar owner, and he is not a, shall we say, always on the, the straight and narrow, uh, not always on the right side of the law. He kind of toes the line. Uh, he's also short and a mean, mean fighter. And he's got sharpened teeth. So... Um, Elves and half-elves aren't necessarily what you would think of from, say, uh, the Tolkien genre, where they're tall, they're fair, uh, and, and, and beautiful and all that stuff. Uh, but he's definitely a good friend and uh, to, to Garrett and watches his back. The Rose Triplets uh, are another funny um, 
anachronism, shall we say, they're not actually triplets. The rose triplets are all from, they're, they're siblings, but they're only half siblings to each other. And they're not even of the same races. Uh, Dojango uh, is the main brother, and he is uh, about five feet tall, and his two brothers are um, crossed between giants and uh, trolls, if I remember right, uh, from the description. And so they're huge. They tower over him. They're like 20 feet tall. Uh, and he's five foot. And uh, they're called the Rose Triplets. His brothers also have female names. One is Doris. Uh, the thing is, is that if you're interested in that, that kind of pulp um, detective novel, this is awesome. Uh, and if you're um, interested in the fantasy aspect, again, awesome. This is a great crossover between the pulp fiction, uh, the pulp a detective fiction genre that, you know, like um, Dashiell Hammett uh, and things. And actually, this uh, book uh, series does have a lot in common with the Nero Wolf series. Um, Garrett is the PI. He's the one doing all the legwork. But he does have a partner, much like uh, Nero Wolf, where he has Archie that goes uh, out and does all the investigating brings people in, and then he does that big reveal in his office, and Nero Wolf never leaves his house. That's, um, Garrett actually has a partner. Uh, I'm gonna s slaughter this, but it's a Logir, I think, is how you pronounce it. That's just my, my, my attempt at pronouncing, uh, the type of being that his, his, uh, partner is. Uh, Logir are, uh, interesting. They do live, they are living, but uh, Garrett's partner is called the Dead Man because he was killed, but he now haunts his body. And so he has, um, their, their species, they live for however long they live, um, and then when they die, they stick around. They don't just leave and go to, you know, they, they stick around, they haunt them, their body for a while, and it isn't until they get finally get bored with doing that that they finally pass on. And so Garrett has this partner that uh, helps him out in cases and things uh, and uh, is able to get information f straight from the minds of, of people uh, that uh, would otherwise not necessarily be willing to give that information. Uh, anyway, uh, so it, it does have that kind of dynamic where Garrett is running around doing the investigative work, doing the legwork, and then back at the, the offices, he has his partner who um, takes that information, assimilates it, um, tells Garrett to go out and get more information from this person or go interview that person. So if you've read any of the Nero Wolf novels, this might be this might appeal to you. Uh, I actually read this first before I started reading the Nero Wolf novels. Uh, so uh, to me, going then going and reading the Nero Wolf novels was uh, kind of an interesting a comparison between the two series to see kind of how um, Glenn Cook was inspired by uh, the Nero Wolf novels in creating the Garrett P.I. series. Uh, they do end up uh, fighting vampires uh, and various other forces as they are investigating and trying to figure out where this woman is who inherited the silver from, from uh, Garrett's uh, army buddy. Uh, and um, as I said, good series. There's a lot going on in it. Uh, a lot of uh, those things that will be uh, familiar to you if you are a fan of either genre, and uh, they work very well together. Uh, the the Garrett, Garrett P.I. series is definitely a good, good read. Um, Glenn Cook is a, is a very interesting author. Um, he's also, if, you're inter if you are familiar or interested, he's also done the Black Company series which is another uh, good uh, good series from, from this author. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you have any books that uh, you want me to review and maybe I've read them, let me know. Uh, I, otherwise, like and subscribe and, and click the bell for notifications. And until, until next time.